right, the AFC East rushing attack arms race has another weapon brought into the division. This time, though, thankfully, it's the Miami Dolphins. The signing of Sony Michelle, running back, as we all know from the Patriots, and then last year with the Rams, is now a Miami Dolphin. So I'm going to dig into it, go over what he brings to the table. I mean, it's not the return of Ricky Williams. Let's not get crazy, but it's a nice piece. Some limitations, but overall a nice piece for the song and dance that it took to get him here. So I'm going to dig into that. But before I do, I do a little caveat. Last uh, podcast I did was Crushing Attack, Arms Race in the AFC East. And I forgot to mention Jay Ajahi. And a couple of Finns fans were like, what about Jay Ajahi? Forgot to mention him, sort of. I was going to mention him, but didn't. Put in the comments why, but I'm going to paraphrase here just in case other people are probably thinking the same thing. Jay Ajahi had some phenomenal moments in the 2016 season. 200-yard games against the Bills, who were 29th in the league in run defense. Offensive line gutted him, and Jay Ajahi made him pay. He had, he had another 200 yards against the Pittsburgh Steelers, who were about 14th in run defense, and that was a nice game. And he had 100 versus the Jets, who were 11th at run defense that season. So those were six good games that he had and total about 700 yards. The rest of the season, he had 500. And in that playoff game, the rematch against the Pittsburgh Steelers, he had 33 yards for 16 carries. And so a lot. Jay Ajahi was very, very talented. He came into the league basically on bone on bone on his knee. And he could have been a lot better running back, but it really didn't materialize with Miami. He had those moments and it looked like a great season. It was for those moments, but in totality and when it counted most, it didn't really come through. He had 200 yard rushing games next year with the Dolphins. Then he was off to Philly and his career ended mostly because of injury and a little bit because of personality. So I didn't mention him there. And that's kind of why it was a touchy subject for me because I was really excited about the running attack and it didn't happen. It was a big letdown. So it, I, I probably should have mentioned it or at least had a caveat, but I didn't. Anyway, Sony Michelle. And I put this uh, little graphic up here, and you'll see 2018 to 2021, he had 209 yards, with nine, uh, 209 rushes with 931 yards. 247 rushes with 912 yards, 79 rushes for 449 yards, 208 rushes for 845 yards, and he played in 13 games, 16 games, 9 games, and 17 games. All right, that's the framework, and it's a quick look at him. You really can't gauge the player fully until you watch him on tape and add these stats in, but two other stats I think bring greater context. I want to focus on those two stats to kind of flesh out my idea of what Michelle is going to bring to the table. And that's yards before contact and yards after contact. Yards before contact is how many yards the offensive line blows the defense off the ball before first contact comes to the running back. Yards after contact, obviously, when a running back first gets hit, how many yards does he generate afterwards? Now, these, I think, are much in tandem are much better stats to understand the running back. They're not perfect, but they really create an image. And then when you look at the way the, the running back is, his size, his weight, his speed, it kind of can create this good understanding, solid understanding of what the back is. It's not perfect, got to have tape. And, you know, it, you know, a lot of stuff that goes into it. But the yards before contact... I spoke about this last year with Duke Johnson, and uh, I think I did it in another video about running backs. This stat is very important, and it's understanding this stat helps you understand the yards after contact. Now, if a running back meets a 300-plus pound defensive tackle, it's a lot harder to break that tackle in a 185-pound cornerback or a 200-pound safety, or even a 240-pound linebacker. So when you see yards before contact, when you're getting into that 2.5, 2.7 yard range, you're talking almost nine yards 
past the line of scrimmage. I mean, nine feet past the line of scrimmage. So you're already past the defensive lineman. You're really involved a lot with the linebackers, and then you're adding in corners and safeties. So the more that you get over the line of scrimmage before contact comes, the easier it is to break tackles. Then you got to factor in how big's the running back compared to how small he is. But when you're in a, that two-yard range, 1.9, 2.1, 2.2, you're in the meat of the defensive line. You're dealing with a lot of linemen, and it makes it harder to break tackles. So we look at this stat here. Uh, Michelle's yards before uh, contact in 2018 was 2.4. 2.1 in 19, 2.4 and 2.2 uh, 2 .2 in 2020, and 2.1 in 2021. That was his yards before contact. His yards after contact was 2.1 in 2018, 1.6 in 2019, 3.6 in 2020, and 1.9 in 2021. Now, to, you look at the first thing that pops out is 3.6. That's phenomenal. But he only had 79 rushing attempts. It's a very limited year. I believe he got injured. But other than that, it's around that 2.2.1 yards after contact. His yards before contact hasn't been stellar. As an example, this year, in 2021, the, 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 two, uh, the Falcons had 2.1 yards before contact and were ranked 29th. Okay, that's that's what that's what Sony Michelle's been seeing roughly. Bottom half, bottom four or five teams in offensive run blocking. Now, Miami last year was 30th with 2.0. So these are terrible. As an example, Austin Eckler, his yards after contact was 2.1 with the same offensive line was a little bit more than Michelle. So he's a little more talented at breaking tackles and eluding tackles than Michelle. But Michelle is still a pretty good runner. So is Eckler. Now, to compare that, the number one running back in the league last year for yards after contact was Rashad Penny with 3.1, but he had 3.2 before contact. So he was receiving a load of help from his offensive line and then breaking tackles like a champ. Now, a more talented runner would be Nick Chubb, who was number two in yards after contact. He had three yards after contact, but only 2.5 before. So you can kind of see how this plays out. These, these stats balance themselves out, and they kind of play off each other. Now, Gaskin, he had 2.1 yards before contact and 1.4 after. Now, he's 194 pounds, so we can understand that breaking tackles of linebackers consistently and defensive linemen and de defensive tackles is very, very hard for him because he's so small. Now, as another example, Najee Harris, who we could have drafted but didn't, only had 1.7 yards before contact. That's terrible. And he had 2.2 after contact. So understanding this guy really was dealing with a lot of big boys, still generated 2.2. That 2.2 is a lot more impressive than, say, Rashad Penny's 3.1 because of what he had to do to get that. Really impressive by Najee Harris. This guy could be phenomenal if he can start getting that 2.5, 2.7, or better before contact. Now, Ramadre Stevenson, uh, who um, was replaced, who replaced Michelle, he had 1.9 before contact and 2.7 after. This guy's an animal. If he can stay healthy and, and get his game better and they can give him better run blocking, this guy guy could be phenomenal he's just getting started if he can keep grinding and getting better and staying healthy look out now taylor over in the colts he was basically the paragon for runner runners last year he had 2.6 before and uh 2.8 after so he got a little bit of help 
pretty good help without Nelson for the most part, and then it got a lot after. He really good situation. So this is a way to compare what we're getting with Michelle. Now, what it says is, Michelle, if you watch him run, he can make a half gap cut, but not too much more. But when he gets some space, he can break tackles and push the pile forward, maximize what's presented. He's 5'11", 215. He's got some strength, but he's not elite. But it's a good piece. And the nice part about it is that he doesn't fumble. He had two fumbles his rookie season, and then he's had two more fumbles since. Obviously, he hasn't had infinite amount of carries here, but that's a nice four fumbles in four year, in four years for uh, what was it? Almost a thousand carries. Not too bad, not too shabby. And his pass blocking in limited doses is pretty good too. So he's a good back to bring in because he can basically do it all. Not a great receiver, you know. He'll catch the football and do something, but you know. But for the most part, he can come in, he can block, he can run, and he won't drop the ball on the carpet. Now, he has his injury concerns, and that's a little bit concerning because we got um, Edmonds, who's got injury concerns. Mostert's coming off a big injury. Gaskin, who's been nicked just about every year. So we got four backs that look like they're the guys going to stay. I think uh, Ahmed, Salvin Ahmed, and then um, uh, Dokes, they're on the outsides looking in. They might come to a practice squad, though. I think uh, uh, Ahmed will get picked up by another team, but Dokes probably could get stashed on a practice squad. But we got four backs with some kind of injury history. But the reality is if we can get two of these a game and keep bouncing them back and forth, one guy gets injured, we bring another guy, this is a good collection of backs. And Michelle brings a big body. He's one of the bigger guys on the roster as far as running backs. Dokes is a little bit bigger, but he fits the bill on what we really needed a bigger back. And to Greer's credit, not spending a draft pick on, I mean, it was some that were in striking distance. I guess we didn't fall to us. We couldn't get, it might've been a better option, but considering what we had, this is a good pickup. I really like the kid. I do like uh, the Ravens picked up Mike Davis. I really like Mike Davis. He's not a great back, but I like, I think in the zone stretch, he might actually work better than Michelle. I think he's more of a full gap cutter. He's more agile, lower to the ground. I, I like the guy. I don't think he's ever really reached his potential for this reason than last. He was with Atlanta last year, and they were terrible offensive uh, blockers, uh, run blockers. I kind of liked Mike Davis a little bit more than Michelle, but I don't know. He might want to go to the Ravens, and I wouldn't say it's definite. Overall, Finn fans, this was a good move. It helps us get through the season. And then next year, we have all those picks. We can get the guy that McDaniel likes. I'm sure McDaniel's really good at evaluating running backs. When the right one comes next year, if it falls to us, we'll pick him up. And that's better than just spending a draft pick or overspending or whatever. I like what they did as far as this group goes. But again, 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 it's going to come down to the offensive line. The yards before contact will make or break these running backs. None of them are capable to do what Peyton did in 77 or Barry did consistently to or Earl Campbell to make the offensive line. They need to block. We need to get into that 2.3, 2.4, 2.5 range before contact. And that's going to be a good gauge for us to know where we're at. We've got to get past this 2.0, 2.1, 2.2 range. We need the running game. This foundation of this offense and McDaniel's system is based on the run game. This is where it's going to happen before contact. Offensive lines make most of these backs. You know, they've got to create a, a decent enough situation for these guys to get off. So, I'd be happy if I were you as a Finn fan. I am. I think there's a good move. Uh, it'll be very interesting to see. He might want to be looking for revenge against the Patriots, which I hope he is. So th this is good. Anyway, this is Curtis saying thank you for staying to the end. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Comments mean the most. Subscribes and likes help us with the Google overlords and keep our uh, sponsors happy. It keeps me in business, so I appreciate that. So everybody viewing, liking, subscribing, and commenting. 
Much appreciated. Nice little move, guys. This is Kara saying thanks for staying to the end. Catch you next time. Go Fins and be well. Start building your own online sports book today by getting signed up with acebred.com service that allow you to book action on sports from all around the world.